Okay, so whoever just got here, you totally missed my old dog talking. <laughs> um, all right, hello, welcome to Wednesday, week two. I made it this far. <clears throat> um, I Today, we're going to do a few things. We're going to meet in breakout rooms so you can all discuss your ideas for project one um, and help each other flesh out your ideas. Um, we are going to talk about design comps, <laughs> design comps versus uh, wireframes, so you get like a good solid understanding of the benefit of both. Um, I had a genius moment this morning where I decided, oh, we should probably code out the wireframes first um, and then add design later, because that's always a big challenge for me in this class. Is like, how do I get you to um, not go straight to fonts? Because I know, I know you're just dying to get those fonts in and like get things arranged, but really you want to get structure first and then start adding uh, margin and padding and spacing stuff around. So um, I think that's going to be the plan. Um, so definitely make sure you have some pretty solid wireframes down and um, have all your final content except for um, like final text. Um, so you don't need your final images. Um, we'll just like do placeholder images um, um, for the first uh, code. And then design comps. Um, I'm going to do a little Flexbox demo. I got a video recorded this morning and um, I want to do a Flexbox demo in class. I'll probably do more than one demo because I think it just takes a bit to get um, this idea of like layout um, and I'll cover a few more kind of fundamental things that I didn't really touch on in the video and then oh yeah and then I just want to do like a little bit HTML quiz um, so we can practice coding without the the crutch of like Visual Studio Code helping us out so um, let's start with like a little quiz so I'm just gonna do it in the chat can I clear this chat? Save chat. Um, I, maybe you guys can actually see the history of the chat, right, from the first class. Okay, cool. Just me. Um, all right, so I'm going to tell you what to code. Um, I'll describe what I want, and then you code it in, um, in the chat. So if I say, let's see, something that you haven't done yet. If I say give me like an audio tag, um, then you'll do audio source. I can't even remember the, I don't know if I'm doing this right. I'll just pretend it's right. So I think that's what an audio tag looks like. So you'll like type out the tag, right? Um, okay, so let's do a header one that says, I love kittens. Um, and the morning class, um, for ones that are multi-line later on, um, the first class was cheating by using notepad and typing it up and then you can do multi-line paste, but with like just Zoom, we couldn't figure out how to do a multi-line um, paste. Like, yeah, I'm gonna figure it out. While you're typing H1, I love kittens in the chat right now, all of you, I'm gonna see if there's a Zoom um, cheat. Zoom multi-line text chat. Yay. Multi meeting chat. I don't see any. Okay. Um, um, it looks like so far everyone is wrong except for Michael because if you say I love kittens you need exclamation points and nobody bothered to put exclamation points um, just kidding okay yeah so yep so it's um, h1 whoops I'm typing in the wrong screen h1 I love kittens 
Oh, I almost forgot my exclamation point. <laughs> there you go. Cool. So um, let's do, um, let's make a paragraph with um, um, I heart tacos. Nice, <laughs> Ariel, nice job. <laughs> cool. Um, yep, just remember when you're closing the paragraphs, use that slash. So it's uh, um, less than forward slash P greater than. I should just say angle bracket, angle bracket, angle bracket. So much easier. Um, cool. Okay. Sweet. Um, all right. Let's try um, a link that will take you to cookies.com. Um, I'm actually going to see what's on cookies.com because it's a cookie website, but it's slow. Okay, let's go visit cookies. Um, anchor tag. Anybody um, uh, willing to dare to get it wrong or right or possibly right? Cool. All right. Cool. So, yeah. Yep. Click for cookies. Um, so, one thing to think about with um, anchor tag. So, this is what it would look like a href equals. Um, HTTP colon slash slash cookies dot com and then the text that will display and then closing the tag. So, um, yep, perfect. So the reason why, um, yeah, um, Ariel, that's perfect. The reason why I add that HTTP or HTTPS, which is kind of the standard now, um, colon slash slash is that we're using the HTTP protocol to go get websites and retrieve them back to our browser. So this HTTP protocol is basically like all websites, all HTML documents um, use this protocol. Um, I don't want to like, I'm not going to dive into it deeply, but it, it is kind of like an interesting subject to think about like how things are actually retrieved. There's, um, there's this whole, um, spec um, about like this protocol and how it, how it works and and um, it sends a bunch of like messages along too so if, if I go to a site um, that successfully is retrieved I'll get um, a success code of 200 if there's nothing there I'll get a 404 error so I'm sure you guys have all run across 404 pages that's an HTTP um, protocol uh, or whatever, HTTP um, status uh, code, which means um, that the resource was not found. So that's what that 404 is. It's all part of HTTP. There's actually um, other protocols that you can call on in um, HTML, and one of them is um, mail to. So mail to, what it does is it'll, it'll um, use your default email um, application um, open it up and then put the email address in. So if I do a href equals mail to colon a reese at pdx.edu and then I'll just have my email as my um, whatchamacallit text, clickable text. So that, um, that'll use the mail to protocol. 
um, which the browser recognizes as like, oh, this is an email address. Let's let's try to send an email or try to open an email app so they can finish it. Um, and you can you can add other parameters to that as well. So if I was to say um, after my email address, I could say question mark subject equals um, hi, just wanted to tell you you're awesome. So I could actually, except I'm not, oh yeah. Um, yeah, so I could add that, so question mark. And then there's a like a property called subject, which is the, that subject line in your email. So I can actually target that and then put in some text. Um, and there's even message body, which I believe is um, body, could be message one of those anyway, I could Google it, but um, if I want to have subject and also another property with another value, I can add a second one by doing ampersand. So I'm basically saying when I do the question mark, I'm saying, um, oh, also send this um, property with this value and then, and then also send this property with this value. So every time you add on after that, you use ampersand. So I could be like, and body equals um, just thinking. And it, it recognizes um, spaces and stuff. Thinking about you and wondering when we're going to play, um, I don't know, lampshade frisbee again. Right, so then on this one that I put in chat, this is saying, okay, it's email, open an email application, and um, that's where I want to email it. Um, the subject is this, and also the body is this. You can even have, and also CCC this, or CC this person, and also BCC this person. So um, that is available on like all of these protocols. So, um, here I go on a tangent. I'm like, it's like tangent day. It's tangent Wednesdays. So um, let's look at how that's used in links real quick. Um, ooh, I got all kinds of emails. It was in this class, I think, that I accidentally shared my email and I had like thousands of unread emails. Well, I will have you know that I actually went through Wednesday or Monday and I deleted all of my unread emails and I feel like a new person except they keep um they just keep piling on um okay beta brand so beta brand um this like property value thing is something that's used a lot especially with um, advertising so if I come on beta brand if I click on one of these links 26 dollar pants um Oh yeah, this is what's on cookies.com. Cookies! Yay, they sell cookies. Okay. Um, if I look at the link that um, resolves when all this crap finishes loading, um, we can kind of see that in, um, in action. So let's, I'm gonna open a new file. I'm gonna make my text bigger. Okay, and I'm going to paste it in. So, um, the domain name, betabrand.com, it's also called the canonical name or the C name. So that's like, um, your, your server, which is like 127.0.0.1. Um, a lot, most machines or a lot of machines have that set up to be to call it localhost. So the C, the C name locally is localhost. So this is the C name for, um, for this website. This actually resolves to some sort of like IP address somewhere, um, but it's the pretty name to us. And then, and then there's like a directory called sale or a route called sale. So then the second thing that it gives us is like, okay, go to this website and then find a directory called sale and then here comes our first um, parameter or property with a value. So question mark 
UTM source equals email. So that's the first thing is um, UTM source. And I just, um, in the last class, looked up what UTM stands for because I forgot. I thought it was like universal tracking something, but no, it's urchin, urchin something. And it, it actually was um, an analytic software that Google bought. So Google bought some company called Urchin and all of their like ad tracking stuff has this UTM source. So if you see UTM, it's Google. Um, but now I know that U stands for urchin. Um, so there's that first one. And then they say, and also UTM medium is campaign. And they're tracking all this stuff to be added to some database. And then also UTM content is sale. And also UTM campaign is 10 week one sale fall into pants sale underscore reminder. <laughs> And then there is UTM term fab fall. So all this stuff, imagine there's somebody has got an Excel spreadsheet somewhere or Google spreadsheet or whatever. And all of these things are, um, are getting tracked. So if somebody goes to this URL, they're tracking, okay, how many people that visited this page came from an email, came from an email campaign, um, came from a sale email, came from the specific campaign, 10 week one sale fall into pants sale reminder. So they're like tracking how, how well um, all of their different emails or Instagram posts or Facebook posts, like how well are they doing in all of those different um, mediums, right? So there's like some massive, um, like this is, well, all, it's all in like Google Tag Manager, but it's like, this massive data collection that's telling them, oh, we do really well in emails and especially this one email, let's figure out what was so great about this one email and do it again. So, um, and they do that using that like property value thing. So back from the tangent, back into the world of HTML tags. Um, okay, stop, okay. Um, Oh, I didn't know Beta Brand did. I thought they were just yoga, like yoga pant dress pants. I didn't know that they actually had other pants, but other clothes before then. Yeah, they started like I don't know. I want to say like eight or nine years ago, and they used to have like a whole line of like patterned clothing and things. Huh. Yeah, I feel like they. Um, my my friend um, works in like social work, and she's she's like she has to go to lots of court appearances and stuff. And she's like, yeah, man, the, like the dress pant, yoga pants, like it's all I need. She like, she would wear pajamas all the time if she could. So it's like really dressy and also super stretchy and comfy like a yoga pant. And so I totally thought that that was like their one thing. And then they, they grew out of that. But I guess maybe the dress pant, yoga pants got so popular that they were like, dude, we've got this magic thing. Let's just like focus on dress pant, yoga pants. And now they're expanding out. Now they have like dress skirt, yoga skirts. I don't know. Okay. Uh, anchor tags. Right. Um, okay. Let's do an image tag for a file called bird.png. Awesome. 
Okay, I'm keeping that one handy. Um, okay, yeah, perfect. Um, yep, just be careful with quotes. So you want to always like, if it's, um, you can kind of think of it like when it's some value, you want to always have a quote around it. So img src equals um, bird.png. And then yeah, the alt tag um, will show up if you um, don't have like if for some reason your um, file can't find that bird.png then it'll say bird instead of just like ah um, picture of a bird yes thank you that is actually way even better so the other reason why you want to use alt tags and the more important reason is that um, if you're visually impaired your screen reader is going to tell you what it sees and so in my instance, it'll go around, it'll say navigation with, you know, like home link, about link. Um, um, and then it'll get to the image and it'll say, it'll probably say something like image bird or something. Whereas um, Miriam's, it will say image picture of a bird. So um, thank you, Miriam, that is um, awesome. So that's like something to really think about with these alt tags is that it's not just um if the image file is broken but um that you're communicating to people um in a pretty important way um okay image tag what if i want to add a class to that image tag so same image with a class added to it You can add, um, so when you look at the image tag, source is called an attribute of the tag. So the base of the tag is basically IMG. Whoop. And so you can um, add a class by saying IMG class equals um, bird.png, or no, sorry. <laughs> We'll just say it's bird um, image. And I could actually use this because I could probably just like, um, yeah, I could actually use um, JavaScript to tell this image tag what the source is. So I could get away with this, um, but generally there's a source tag involved. And even if there is JavaScript, you'd wanna have source um, because what if like JavaScript is turned off or, um, it probably wouldn't, it would load more slowly if the source was um, not in the HTML. But so you can add as many attributes to, thing as you, to things as you want. So image source, I can say class equals bird image, um, alt tag, picture of a bird. Um, and you can just sort of pile them on. Um, so what do you think? Do you think this, hang on, okay, do you think that this image tag, the second one, do you think that that would work? Could do the the thumbs up or thumb, oh, there's no thumbs down. What is that all about? There's only two reactions. I think I just realized that. Why would you, okay. Only positive. Um, so what do you guys think? Yes, no. No, yes, yes, no. Um, 
Okay, the answer is yes, it'll work just fine. You can rearrange this however you want. You can also do image source um, bird.png without quotes, but I don't recommend it because it may not work in a it's just not good forms. There's a lot of like general practice and stuff that you want to kind of stick to. Um, another thing on that, what was I going to say? I don't remember. Oh yeah, so you can have them in any order that you want, but you want to just sort of stick to a pattern. And the pattern for like everyone tends to be image, then source, um, and then I don't know, it kind of falls apart after that class and then alt, maybe alt last. Um, but like consistency is your friend because if you're looking down a long line of um, images, if they've got the same pattern, it's like easier to to be able to see, oh, does that have a class? Does that have a um, an alt? Um, okay, one more HTML challenge and then we'll um, move on. And this is the one that's multi-line. Um, so make an unordered list that has um, Let's see, papaya, lime, and coconut on it. So a bullet, a bullet list. are going to hate me after a while. Don't worry if you misspell papaya or lime or coconut. Have you all given up? Have you given up? All right, I'll type in. So it's UL is the, um, the like top of it. Um, top and bottom. So you're saying, okay, I want a bullet list and here are my list items. So then it's li papaya, close the li, and then li lime, and then li coconut. Okay, so it's all in one line, unfortunately, but um, it would look like it would look like this. Um, mm, I don't know, actually. There's probably um, yeah, I'm not sure. <laughs> There's um. Well, yeah, actually, if you had read, I believe it should have been in the HTML already, but maybe, um, maybe not in chapter, you're on up to chapter two and three. Um, so yeah, maybe not. Um, but yeah, this is what it looks like. Um, share screen. Okay, so this is an unordered list, so it'll give you, um, oh yeah, it's definitely in the HTML videos that are posted, so, um, so yeah, there's an unordered list, and then there's also a, um, which is a bullet list, and then OL is for ordered list, which will give you one, two, three, four, um, I think actually, yeah, um, okay, so there is that. Let's switch um, gears a little bit and um, talk about um, the project. So for project one, 
what you want to really focus on is um, is having um, a single subject matter with four different attributes, things, flavors. So um, let's like if I'm doing Oregon wildflowers, um, I might pick four different flowers and I want all the pages to feel cohesive, one design. I have um, an Oregon flower on one page that's like tall and grassy and so maybe I'll have a vertical um, arrangement for that um, or I might play against that and have a totally horizontal box with like a long tall image and then on the page where I have like a maybe Oregon ground cover kind of wildflower I would have my text you know in the, the opposite of that so you can kind of play around with layout and also um, color scheme can be um, um, pretty um, exciting as well and I have a few examples um, let's just look at those before we break out into breakout rooms. Um, of course, I had things open and then closed them. I'll just find one. Oh, actually, you know what? I'm going to go find them and reopen them. So, um, Let's do breakout rooms and I'll, I'll make sure I have some good examples. Um, so in the breakout rooms, um, I'm gonna break it up so there's three to four of you in there. Um, and so we'll do like 20-ish minutes. And um, so each of you will have about five minutes each to just um, talk about what you're thinking about for your design. If you have some wireframes to show, great. If you have even your sketches, that could also be helpful. Um, but just talk about your ideas, what type of content you're going to display for each item, um, maybe a little bit about why you chose it, um, what you're thinking about, and then talk about some design um, strategies for how you're going to have um, the site feel cohesive, but the pages feel, um, have a different feel. So um, yeah, anything I'm missing about project one so far? Um, so as of right now, you should have some sort of rough idea about what you want to do, and you've been kind of working towards getting those um, those wireframes done, and those will be due by um, the time we start class on Monday. Cool. So I'm going to do, um, should we know how to do that? You mean the wireframes? Um, or just like the HTML coding part of it? It was the HTML coding thing. <coughs> it was the HTML coding thing. I had said that like 20 minutes ago. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. Um, yeah, so for coding, um, like I had someone in the morning session say, I want to do a thing where I have an image um, and like a bunch of images that are basically the nav. And then when you click on them, it expands. Um, so those are the kinds of things that like I'll end up doing um, if you're not able to find um, code pen. We'll talk about this more next week, but um, a lot of times you can find snippets that'll do what you want to do. And this class is all about finding other people's snippets and like making use of it. So I'm going to help you figure out how to code all that stuff um, by either sending you to resources externally or making quick videos for you for all of you to share. It tends to be that uh, um, a lot of this, this class between like morning and afternoon there'll probably be a lot of similarities or things that can be like adjusted to work for multiple um, projects. So yeah, so we'll kind of like figure out the plan. Don't worry about knowing how to code it. Um, uh, yeah, it's like a we're learning as we're going um, kind of process. So project one will probably be a giant mess, um, but you know, it's like 10 weeks. So we're gonna make a giant mess and then we're gonna make less of a mess. And then we'll probably go back in and clean up our mess or just go forward and pretend the mess never happened. But you know, like it's a, it's an iterative process. So yeah, don't worry about knowing how to do it. Just like dream big. Um, and I'll help you figure out next week if it's like too big of a dream, um, if it's doable, how to do it, all that stuff. <clears throat> totally choking. Okay. So breakout rooms. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, um, hold on, it's like 
trying to do the same thing. Okay, so I'm gonna give us, I'll give us 22 minutes. Sounds good. And then count down after closing. Okay. Cool, move. So if you haven't done breakout rooms before, what'll happen is, um, oh, wait, hang on, create. Um, okay, um, so if you haven't done breakout rooms, you will get a little button that'll show up in front of your face and it'll say, take me to a breakout room. That'll take you to a room that'll just have three or four of you in it. Um, I won't be able to hear or see you in there. And um, I think for today, I'm not gonna like butt in on you. Um, I'm just gonna let you chat because it's kind of the first time you've had to get to know each other. Um, so yeah, go chat, talk about projects. Um, and then, yeah, it'll like prompt you to come back like one minute before and then another button will come, um, show up and you can click it and that'll take you back here. Cool. Okay, here we go. Okay, four rooms, bam. Open all rooms. I have. Sorry, I forget. I have a website that I um, shared with them. That's a really good resource. Cool. Okay. I just shared it here. I don't know why it keeps. Oh me. yeah. So yeah, W three schools. Um, uh, that one, um, DevDocs IO and um, Mozilla Developer Network. Those are the three biggies. Yeah. Um, well, DevDocs IO is pretty new. Um, but yeah. Did I? I didn't demo W three schools in here. Then apparently, okay, okay. Um, also, I you know I want to get us through this like wireframing part, but um, um, the videos. So I, I went and checked the book um, lists are definitely in this week's reading for the Ducket book, um, and they're definitely in the videos that I made. So um, it might have just been that like um, a lot of you haven't just gotten to the videos or readings yet. Um, I'm trying not to bombard you with too much information and just kind of get you used to HTML, get you used to like designing your site. Um, but yeah, there are great resources like W3 schools. Um, a lot of times if I'm trying to remember a tag, I'll do a little sharing and then I'm going to kind of finish with um, a couple other demos too. Um, okay, share my desktop, share. Um, okay, you're looking at my invite for a <laughs> meeting. Um, so I will Google, I'll say W3C and then I'll say um, bullet list. And um, that'll bring up the page that shows you. So HTML lists. Um, if I click on it, um, it has. Um, what they look like and then you can actually try them out. There's a little, it'll pop up with a little window where you can like adjust things and try them out. Um, and then they give you like a code example right there. Um, so yeah, W3C is great. The other one that's nice and they also have, um, they have HTML and CSS. Um, the other resource that I use is I would all do, so it's Mozilla Developer Network, MDN, um, bullet list. Um, and they're fairly similar um, in content. So, so it'll take me to developer.mozilla.org. And then this is what MDN looks like. Um, so they've got an example that you can edit right here, which is nice. Um, and then you can also play with um, the CSS for it. So uh, this one's pretty nice because it, it gives you the default um, CSS. So circle is um, the default. You can change it to disk um, or, um, oh yeah, they already have the um, square one. What are some um, disk circle? You can say none. 
Um, I can't remember the other ones, but they probably have them listed. Circle, disk, square. Ooh, triangle. Um, not all browsers support triangle, but that's pretty cool. Um, so yeah, you can find out more information about the tag. So MDN is also great. Um, and then I think I showed you devdocs.io. Um, Um, and so on resources, like I'll be adding things like that here. Um, I also want you guys um, probably next week after your wireframes are done to spend some time on um, a site called um, Code Academy has um, an interactive HTML and JavaScript um, thing. Where's learn? We'll see. Dot com. Um, I'll just do a code academy learn HTML. Um, and I'll give you two options because some people do better with interactive learning. Some of you may already have some HTML and CSS. So there's a video that you can watch that I realize you can speed up even and type along with it. Um, so I'll give you those two kind of after the wireframes. Um, but yeah, here's the learn HTML. So what it does is it kind of talks you through, um, asks you to try code, it tests it for you to tell you if it worked or not. Um, and then, so you go kind of through one by one. Um, and there are, it says nine hours, but actually there's only a few that are free. So if I go to like element and structure, come on, there's about two, like checkpoints per that are free. And then the rest are paid. I don't want you to do the paid ones. I don't know why it, they changed their interface. So um, I'll send this later because, um, but yeah, so only do the free ones because the pro one I think is kind of a lot and you just need kind of like the basics to get going. So um, there's those, but yeah, W3C is great. Um, so let's talk about, um, oh, wireframes. I'm going to do that part first. Um, so I brought a couple examples. Um, this is um, a much larger project than project one, but I thought it would be good to kind of look at like a full, full fledged project. So this is a final wireframe, um, digital wireframe. Um, the, all the content is there, the, eight, the, the text is there, um, but the images, the fonts, um, are not there. So it really focuses on layout, um, content hierarchy, and then you get a little bit of a sense of what the final text is going to look like. So it gives you a feel for the site, but it doesn't have, um, it doesn't have all the bells and whistles, right? So um, what I find, um, well, okay, two things. When you're designing a site, if you start from design and not from content, not from like general layout, um, you miss really big stuff. Like you don't think about, okay, if somebody's entering this site, what do they see first? Um, what do they see last? Um, who are they? What do they want? Um, how am I going to give it to them? You know, like all that stuff. You ask those questions. Um, if you start with color and typography, then you focus on that. You focus on how does this look? but not like, how is this conveying the information that I want it to convey? Um, so that's one benefit of wireframes. The second huge benefit of wireframes is that when you're working with clients, you wanna make sure that you have your content hierarchy down. You wanna make sure that you are answering all those questions about um, who are the stakeholders of this project? Who are my main customers? Who are my secondary customers? How are they going to find the information that they need? And wireframing allows you to focus on that. Um, and it allows your clients to focus on that instead of, um, I'm not really sure about this color palette. There's a typo on this page. There's, you know, this button style is weird. They'll focus on like, they'll just zoom in on the nitty gritty. Whereas if you give them this black and white and gray wireframe, um, they have no option other than to say, okay, I see we'll have three columns, you know, that will have um, the different like prescription op options, um, that kind of stuff. So it, it gets them to focus on, on that. Um, so these, I would consider these to be final wireframes. 
Um, they've got all the final content. So I see that this is gonna have three headers. I see that um, there's going to be an active state. So if I'm on the get started page, um, the nav will be activated in some way. Um, I know that I'll have a big hero with um, some text and a call to action. I know that each section of this home page will be separated somehow by background color or texture or something that delineates between the sections. Um, I see that the content will, um, what do you call it, will like mirror, that the layout will mirror itself um, as you go down. Um, there'll be some sort of um, block quote um, and like a sign up action down here and there'll be a footer, right? So let's look at another one of her sub pages. Um, and um, and I'll sh like this, this person really went to town and I'll kind of talk through like why there are so many iterations to this single page. So this page is the dashboard. Um, and so they've got like an engage section, um, a tag section, and then they've got like um, organizable folder section. Um, that's sort of organized by category. Um, she's showing what it looks like if there's more folders than can be visible, they'll collapse. You can collapse and expand them. Um, and then like, so let's see this page. So in this iteration of this page, she's showing that you can actually like drag and drop folders over. So she's kind of like um, showing the, um, the interactivity of things. She probably didn't need that. She's like being extra, extra um, like uh, illustrative. But yeah, so she'll do stuff like that. She'll say, or you can like drag the whole open folder over um, to rearrange. And then she goes, she goes through kind of motions like that, where she shows the active and inactive states of things. This one's like a huge application. Um, here is a little more simpler one, but same, same idea. Come on, portfolio. Um, so um, this person, um, this is their portfolio. They're going to have a logo, um, her name in big lettering, um, a, a header with some some uh, a tagline and then in featured work there'll be four big um, horizontal images of um, screenshots or something um, there'll be a call to action button to go view them there'll be an about section and then here is her um, case study layout whoa so slow with zoom it's hard to tell how fast i'm zooming in okay so case study um, they've got um, a section for the role they played, the tools they used, um, a big horizontal image, and then they're going to have problem solution, um, a view of the prototype process. So all this is, um, oh, they haven't gotten to final content yet. Usually by um, the end of your digital wireframes, you want to have as much final content as possible. A lot of times with clients, content is like so hard to get out of them. Um, but when it's you, hopefully you'll be able to just like get that content in here. Um, and then she's got conclusion and then the same footer. So it's really, it's all about layout um, and thinking through problems before you get down to that like nitty gritty part where it's harder to make changes, right? Um, and I might, you know, looking at this, I might be like, that's an awfully long line of text to have. Like maybe they should put it in two columns or something. So much easier to do this in the wireframe than like later on. Um, so that's wires. Um, so yeah, no final images, just gray, white, and black, and just um, as much final text as you can. So let's look at design comps. So design comps are um, basically like static versions of your site. So it's what you want it to look like. You're, you're painting um, like a pixel perfect picture of, you, of what you want it to look like and you're focusing on, for this project, just desktop. Um, and 1440 is kind of the sweet spot for width. 
um, which I believe is in the project description. I'll make sure. Um, but here's a design comp for the first project. And actually, they changed their homepage. Let me get to their second homepage version. Oop. Um, so I think they decided to go with a layout like this. Um, they they used the um, these large constellation images as the um, the menus, and had like a mouse over. Um, and so this is what each sub page looks like. They're going to have um, for this page for Orion. They'll have text over here, um, the year it was discovered, and then um, the header of the page. And then they had this cool little like outline um, that was just kind of off page a little bit. Um, and this is their home link back. So they've got Orion, Ursa Major, Ursa Minor, and Scorpius. Um, that was their first home page. Oh, okay, so this is like a, another page. So compared to Orion, they're playing with different fonts. Oh, this is so slow. So with Ursa Major, so here's Orion. Sorry, guys. I think these are very large files, even though they're black and white. <laughs> um, so Ursa Major, they switched up where the header was. They moved the content up. So they're kind of playing with layout um, and, and basically placing it around this giant um, image of the constellation. So that was how they chose to, um, to show the differences between each page. Um, close, you giant file. OK, um, this is Casey Cooper, who I think is graduating very soon. She did this um, about whales. So this was her home page. Um, and then um, blue whale. So she did kind of a similar thing. She's got two things going on. She's got a bit of a color change. So blue whale, she's using this awesome like um, Pepto Bismol pink. And then orca, she's got this golden color. Um, humpback, she's using kind of a purplish pink. And then she's got like this lavender on gray whale. She's also kind of adjusting the layout a bit. So playing with story of, um, of layout. And then in hers, she ended up adding a bit of motion as well. Um, um, but this is all, you can kind of think of these as like baby steps, right? So um, wireframes will be basically an image, like a box of an image here, and then a box of text here. Um, title of page, right? And then um, next phase, like doing that in HTML, next phase, getting this whale image in, but maybe not having that overlap that's happening. And then third phase is like actually really honing in on that layout. Um, so we're gonna kind of do one step at a time. So that is that site. Um, this one, let's see, I wanna look at the egg one. So this is another one for project one. Um, this is Lauren Sell's project. Um, this is her, let's see, where's the home page? So here's her home page. Um, she did hers all about eggs. So um, she's got um, history, anatomy, ways to eat, and fun facts. Those are her four pages. So she chose to do one site about an egg and then four things about the egg. Um, and so let's see, she's got like an anatomy illustration. Um, and then I think these, I think she had them like linking to recipes. So she's got like um, over easy, over medium, over hard. Boiled, poached, scrambled, baked, I don't know. Uh, I have no idea. And I have no idea. Oh, pickled. I don't know what this one is. Um, but yeah, and then what other pages? So there's the history page and um, fun facts. So this one was a really challenging one because um, 
uh, we ended up like, I ended up recommending that she just do this in um, transparent images. So a lot of her text was in a transparent image overlaid on top of other images. It was just kind of like too early in the term to do all the stuff she wanted, like the, um, this one especially was really challenging. Um, and by the end of term, she did actually have um, text here. Um, I think that you could mouse over and display a little more info. Um, but when she first started, we just, I was like, let's just do images right now. Um, so that's kind of where this started. Um, yeah, and so you're really just nailing down everything, right? So here's another one about surf. Um, they changed their homepage a few times. So those are also in here. I think this was, I think this is what they ended up going with. So they had a really interesting nav that was on the bottom right. So normally we think of navs as like top right. Um, they did a bottom, bottom right. And then I believe these were all clickable. And then this is one of the sub pages. So um, they've got this great vertical text um, that's halfway between so there's basically like this column and this column, right? And then, um, so this text, um, they placed like in between the two, um, totally doable. Um, and then, yeah, I think they only had like one design for um, sub page and they ended up doing all their sub pages pretty similar. Um, um, questions about like design comp and what should and shouldn't be included, all that good stuff. Um, uh, if you're working in XD or Figma or something like that, a lot of times you'll just be um, exporting images like straight from there. So that kind of, that's one other benefit of using um, like a design composition tool. Um, yeah, and then when we get to project two, I'll just do a quick, quickie demo. I'm going to run out of time, but um, we're going to do both mobile and desktop designs for that. So this is um, this is Harrison's mobile version. Um, so he's got a home page. Um, here's his um, pop down navigation, and then um, all the sub pages. And then, and then here's the desktop version. So as you can see, simplified and you get down to um, to mobile. Um, he's getting rid of the big image. He just like if you're on your phone, you want to see the hours, you want to see the menu, um, and you want to like be able to contact them, right? So those are the important things. On desktop, you want to like feel, you want to feel where you're going, where like feel the experience, right? So he's got this image of their brick and mortar um, restaurant. And then he's showing in the design comp that this is gonna be a slideshow and that this, um, the, a white um, border around a blue circle will indicate that that's live. So he's kind of getting a lot of that stuff taken care of. Um, he's using a, an underline when he's up on the home page. there's like a line saying you're home right now. And then when you get to the next page, he uses the same line to show you that you're on the hours page. So he's kind of thinking through all of that. Um, and then same here. So here's a multi-page um, menu, I believe. I thought there was like, uh, but oh yeah. So um, he's using that same line um, to show you that right now you're on brunch and you could click on dinner and drinks and happy hour. Um, yeah, and then Another mini slideshow for the about images. Um, yep, and then same for gallery. So he's kind of thought through a lot of stuff um, in the design. Um, okay, I think that's good. Um, would you like me to post some of these so you have like examples to go look at? And, okay, we'll do that. Um, all right, so I wanna do a demo. And I first want to talk about a concept that I was trying to avoid talking about because we're going to use a library that will make it so we don't have to worry about it. But I think I should tell you about it because it's going to come up. So let me share my, I'm totally running out of time. See, I did so good on Monday. 
I was like, what am I forgetting with you guys? And then today I'm just like chugging. Okay, share screen. Oh wait, I wanna do iPad. Share. Mirror. Okay. So, no, not my settings. I want my Procreate. Okay, so um, I think we talked a bit about, um, so here's my text. There's an invisible, whoa, where are you seeing that? Oh my gosh, it's so slow. Wow, super slow, okay. Um, so we talked about how there's sort of an invisible box around your content, right? So um, if I if I was to say, let's say this is a div with a class of, I don't know, just foo, because I have no imagination left today. Um, and for foo in CSS, I'm going to say, make this 300 pixels wide. Um, right now, it's just a content box. There's no padding or margin or anything. So this will be 300, right? Um, this is a bar saying, I'm 300 pixels. If I add padding, um, the way that HTML is defaulted, this is still considered to be a 300 pixel box. But in layout terms, I'm kind of screwed because I have to say, well, okay, sure. I know my, my content's 300, but actually I want the actual, actual box to now be, let's say this is like 20 pixels. I like, I need to say that it's like actually 340 in order to make it be the right, or like, yeah, or sorry, I need to subtract that 20 and 20 in order for this to stay a 300 pixel box. So I now I have to say that, oh, actually, no, it's like 260. It's not really 300. Um, and that sucks because when we're laying stuff out, we don't want to like deal with that, right? We, and then it gets worse if there's, um, if there's margin as well, right? Um, so I'm going to display to you what this looks like in HTML. I'm going to open, I'm going to do the um, um, uh, Julia Child of HTML right now. I'm going to say desktop. Where is it? Content box. Okay, so right now I'm going to open this in a browser. Desktop content box. Okay, so this black line, this is um, 300 pixels, I think, or whatever it is that I set up. Um, and so right now the content box is the same width as this line. So in code, I have um, I have a, a box, class of box, and then I have this horizontal rule. That's um, how you get a line. So I'm saying, oh, so I'm saying my box is 600 wide and my ru ruler is 600 wide. Um, but I'm also adding padding and margin and border. And like, what if the border was like six pixels wide? I can't see your screen if you're trying to screen. Oh, dang it. I unshared to share and then I forgot to share. So sorry, guys. It's all good. Share. Okay, so um, right now this black line is 600 pixels wide and this paragraph is 600 pixels wide. So um, what I'm looking at in code is that I'm saying this box, which is like the whole box that the paragraph is in, um, content box. So I have um, a div with a class of box and I've said, make this 600 pixels. 
but what's really happening is the content inside of it is 600 pixels and everything else is like adding on top, right? So here's my box, um, 600 pixels. I made this line so we can see where, like what is 600 pixels. Um, and what it's doing is it's like telling, it's like not telling the box to be 600 pixels, it's telling the content. Um, that sucks because what if I want like one 600 pixel box and I don't care what's left over for the content. I only care about my layout. Um, in the olden days, <laughs> you'd have to say, okay, 60 padding on left, 60 padding on right, 120. So that becomes like 480, right? And then 30 margin on left, 30 margin on right, that becomes 60. So now we're done to, down to 420. And then six pixel on the left and six pixels on the right, minus 12, 408, that equals 600. Hooray, wait. <laughs> oh, I haven't even done it. Oh, I have actually, the margin's invisible. Um, that sucks, I don't wanna do that. Okay, let's not do that then. Let's go back to 600. And instead we're gonna use a magic, um, a magic tag. So this is using, um, it's called box model. And it's basically like, if you look up um, HTML box model, oh, that's not gonna help me. Oh, HTML box model. Um, you'll get a whole bunch of, um, like if you click on image, you'll kind of get a bunch of images that show you what I'm talking about here. Where's the favorite, my favorite one? Usually there's like one versus the other. Content area, come on, give me one. Um, what if I say border box, will it give me two? All right, here we go. So um, this is how we get around this. So if I look at this image, it's probably really blurry, but so um, this one, oh my gosh, I can't even read it. Okay, we'll just do it ourselves. Too crappy. So. Um, we want to change the box model. So there is a wildcard in CSS, and that is so if I say asterisk, it means I'm changing like everything to this, right? So um, I'm changing body all the way down to anchor tag, like everything I want this to apply to it. And I'm going to say box sizing um, order box. And what that does is, um, so everything's the same. We have margin and padding and border, um, but if we look at it now, if we look at it now, and I refresh, um, then our box is being, um, it's, it's, it's letting us do the layout that we wanna do. So um, the reason why I tried to avoid telling you this is because there's all these really awesome libraries that you can, add to your site. Um, my favorite one is the Eric Meyer um, reset. And what it does is um, it resets that the ugly HTML default font. It resets the ugly under links. It gets rid of that. There's like a margin on the body that's really annoying. Um, and it's basically all it is is a big file full of CSS. Um, that resets everything for you. So it's like literally you just like get the file. Here's what it looks like. So you just copy all this code and you can either stick it at the top of your CSS file or you can like import it. Um, so actually let's do this. I'm just going to grab it. And I'm going to get rid of box model because I don't actually need it anymore or box sizing. And I'm just going to stick it um, at the top of where my CSS is. Woo, it, it might mess up other stuff in my layout because it kind of resets everything. Oh, funny. Where's the box model? 
Um, okay, weird. It's not okay. Well, there is no box model. Display block. Fantastic. Um, cool. This one doesn't have box model. Box. Nope. All right. All right. Well, we still need it for this one then. I guess um, the other previous versions, you didn't need it, but um, I'll just like stick it. I think that was the end of that one. Um, pound. That's really strange. Um, box sizing border box. Um, Um, but see how like the margins now gone? Um, it resets a bunch of that stuff. Okay, after all that, I did that because I'm gonna show you um, a very quick flex demo. There's a video of it, um, but I just wanna kind of talk through it and then I'll let you guys go. I'm around, I'm just gonna stay here till three. Um, I'll turn off my video and sound if nobody's around. Um, so if you do pop in, um, just holler and I'm, I'm within earshot. Um, but okay, so I'm going to add um, some, oops, I have like double column happening. Okay, how do I turn off? Okay, double column. Oh, now there's more. Single column. You can add, um, you can have multiple files open at once. Um, I use Sublime Text, so now I can't remember how to un-column my columns. And there's a big annoying thing in my way. View, appearance, edit, layout, single, okay. All right, that is weird, go away. We'll just put you over there. Okay, <laughs> sorry guys. Um, file. So weird. Um, style. All right, so here is my style. I'm just getting things set up. Um, I am going to, oh, I bet I know how I did that. Um, open this page in the live server. Okay, and what I'm gonna do is I wanna have a double column for this so that I don't have these like super long text lines. Um, so by default, all this stuff is using display block. Um, there are a few other property values that you can use for display, but as you can see here, if I go mouse over main, right now it's called display block and it wants to take up the whole width of the page. So I'm gonna change that value. I'm gonna go to um, this thingy, this page. Um, it's my design journal. Get rid of you. Oh, I'm in like a read only. I've done something crazy. Close out. Try again. Okay. So, I have, um, you can collapse um, these like parts down. So I could like collapse article. In this case, I want to collapse all my sections because I want to see different sections. Um, so I'm going to take this out because we haven't done that yet. Um, okay, so for main, right, I have, um, oh, right, okay, so. Oh my God, I'm in the wrong one. Okay, design journal. Um, here we go. So in main, I have a bunch of sections. Each one of these sections has um, the week and a bunch of stuff. Um, and so I want these to be the things that are creating columns. Um, and so what I wanna do is I wanna find their parent, which is main. And I'm gonna tell the main, main that I want it to be flex. So I'll just give this a class. I like to, um, because like two column and three column is pretty common. Um, I'm just gonna make a generic two column um, class. 
So on main, which is the parent of all these things, I have a class called to column. I'm going to go over to my CSS and I'm going to add dot to column. And I'm going to say, okay, main, main with a class of two column. Let's change you to a display of flex. Um, that is going to try to flex everything into one big row. Um, so cool, we know that flex is working. Can you guys see that okay? It looks beautiful. Um, so let's fix that. So we need to do two things. We need to do, um, we need to give this a wrap because we want to say, hey, I actually like, just, just wrap it. So flex wrap equals wrap. Um, I don't think that will do it. Oh, now it's being really funky. Now it's trying to decide how to wrap. It doesn't know how to wrap, but it's making decisions based on the width of the content within. So we're like, okay, cool. That's, you know, thanks for trying. Um, but actually what I really want is for each one of those individual columns to be 50%. So if we look at our journal, we want each section inside of the class to column to be 50%. So now if I say style and I say, okay, find me the class called to column and inside of that, find anything that's a section. And then I want you to give it um, a flex of 50%. And now if I do this, I've got two columns. Woohoo! Um, it's pretty smashed up, so I wanna give it some padding. Um, and here is where I run into this box model issue, box sizing issue. So if I try to give some padding to each one of these, so I'll say padding 20 pixels. Um, oh, and I don't have this. <laughs> Um, then it just goes back to one column because it's like, well, I don't have, you know, I have 50% and that's not enough plus, you know, 40 on either side, 40 pixels on either side. So I'm just going to wrap the best I can, which means each one of these is just going to take up a whole width. So um, that's where this like um, asterisk, so wildcard, make this apply to every element on this page. Um, box sizing border box. So don't do it by the content, do it by the border. So um, the default is basically like content is the ruler, content is like the um, supreme leader. And when you change it to um, a border box, then it's um, then the border is the supreme leader. So then you can do layouts like this. Um, okay, I have way talked longer than I thought and I've gone over flex and design comps. Um, okay, so for next week, um, make sure you have wireframes done. Um, I have added a flex box video so that we'll be able to kind of like start working on layout um, and I'm gonna add um, a Figma wireframe video, but um, you probably all have favorite tools right now, Illustrator, Photoshop, um, InDesign, those are totally fine for wireframes. Um, just when you upload them, um, save them out as like a PNG um, is probably the best bet. PDF um, if you want, but just smaller file version before you put them up in this camp. Um, get those done and then just start thinking about um, your design. So if you haven't kind of worked on a mood board, um, there isn't going to be a mood board done. I will have or, um, required for um, an assignment, but I will have like, uh, I will ask for final design comps just so I can like give you some um, suggestions on them. But yeah, wireframes due Monday. Um, there's reading and videos. There's a new um, uh, journal prompt up there. Um, that's just like, tell me about your project, how you're going to have pages differently. So all that is on that weekly um, work breakdown. 
Ba -ba -ba. This guy, so week two. Um, yep, so all these are about 10 minutes each. Um, so I would get through these, get your wireframe, um, and then here's your um, journal entry. Um, and yeah, and wireframe you can just upload into the homework directory, which is back here, homework. Um, yeah, homework two. Cool. Um, okay, and I'll put some of those comps up um, and wireframes um, just so you have like a, um, a visual to look at. Um, yeah, and you're welcome to go. I will be around if you're having any issues. Um, yeah. Thank you all. Bye. Thank you. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. Cool. Okay, let me stop recording.